Okay, we're here with Curtis Patterson of the New South Wales Speedboats Blues, back at a ground that has got some great memories for you already. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that one game I played was obviously pretty pretty special, and yeah, it's one of the best grounds in, uh, in the world, so it was an honour to play here. Going back a stage in terms of your own cricket, what, uh, what level did you get to as a youngster, and when did you first start feeling as though you were pretty good at this game? Uh, well, I played cricket basically since I was six years old in, uh, in juniors and, and then all the way through juniors and I made the, the Emerging Blues program and I sort of, I suppose, from then on I sort of realised that, you know, I might have a shot in this and getting the opportunity to work with all the, all the coaches growing up as a 13, 14 year old put me in pretty good stead and then obviously captaining the under 17s and then going to the under 19s was, you know, just another stepping stone and then getting that gig in the, in the Shield game here was a, was a great experience and Basically, basically all my juniors, I just sort of, I've always known that I had something there and I really wanted to pursue it, so it was good. Were you a standout player in the juniors? I mean, were you, were you scoring you were really heavily or were you just a... Oh, no, not, not, not really, mate. I mean, I just, I went out there, I just went out there and, and did my best each game and, and if it paid off, it paid off. And I mean, I scored a few runs every now and then, which was good, but, you know, I just played it for the enjoyment, which was the main thing. Was there a moment at innings as a youngster that we scored a big score against a good attack and you thought, you know, I'm pretty good at this game? Uh, yeah, well my first, my first ever ever 50 was uh, in the under 10s in the Foster Shield and I actually scored scored 90 that game against the team who won it and we, uh, you know, I actually ended up losing the game first almost because I got out right at the crucial time but uh, I suppose that first innings, my first ever 50 as a junior was, was something pretty special and yeah, that was, maybe, that was maybe the first thing that I sort of realised that I had a bit of potential there and wanted to keep going. Your dad obviously played a lot of a lot of great cricket. Did you just sort of tag along and watch him every Saturday? Uh, I think I did as a, as, a, as a youth, to be honest with you. I can't remember. I think I was that young, but uh, I've heard a lot of stories about him from, from mum and himself, and I heard he, he went all right. So, uh, yeah, I think I would have enjoyed it as a little baby, walking around the playgrounds there and stuff like that. But then, yeah, it was good fun. 17s and 19s. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a big step up in terms of you playing for your state. Uh, were, there, were there some good players around you, you know, guys you think will, will go on as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, playing with all, all the youth cricketers I sort of brought up with in, the, in all the emerging blues stuff. I mean, playing with them for New South Wales, they're obviously all talented cricketers. And I mean, playing against guys from all other states, you know, the best under-17s in each state was uh, and-19s. was obviously, you know, it's always going to be pretty tough. You can't go there and expect it to be easy. And, I mean, I really enjoyed them both. You know, you get to play, you know, different conditions to, to New South Wales. You know, hard. I've played in Adelaide both times, so it's been nice flat tracks over there, and it's been, you know, good fun. All those little tours are always good fun to be in and around the boys. Tell us how you ended up at the famous St George Club. Uh, I suppose just growing up. I mean, growing up in the area, I played all my junior cricket in the George River St George comp. So I mean. There wasn't really any other any other option when I when I came to playing grade. I mean, they always sort of looked after me, you know, all through juniors and then coming up towards the rep rep stuff and then at the end of reps. And I mean, to be honest with you, it's a great club and I don't really ever want to play for anyone else at the moment. And was it a normal transition? Started in fifth grade or train on? Ah, uh, no, it wasn't actually. I I got sort of invited to go to go and play grade in my last year of juniors, and I, I was an under I was an under sixteen. And the, uh, the last comp in juniors wasn't the great comp, so we sort of thought we might have, we might go and play grade, and we did, and I ended up playing third grade that year. And then basically had a whole year in third grade, then a whole year in second grade, and then started in first grade the year after. And playing in first grade, you know, with the likes of Moses and, and Trent Copeland, and, you know, some experienced quality cricketers, has that, has that helped a lot? Oh, absolutely. I mean, their, their experience, their knowledge is invaluable. I mean, you get, get to play with them them itself and just to see how they go about their business just like here in the in the shield game you know just just learning from what others are doing is a, is a great thing and yeah I've really enjoyed that just top blokes as well I'm really enjoyed playing with them. Obviously started scoring some some heavy runs for St George when, when was the moment where you thought you know what I'm, I'm half a chance of playing for New South Wales here? Uh, I mean there wasn't one to be honest with you I mean I sort of got the call up to that to that Futures League game which was a which is a pretty big honour and I was really looking forward to that and I didn't have any thoughts of playing shield cricket at all and then midway through that shield game and I think I fielded for two sessions so I didn't even get a bat and then Freddie called me up that night and, and said there was a few injuries and did I get my chance and it was just sort of out of the blue and it was just I really didn't know really what to say to him on the phone it was just one of those moments where you're just shocked and you just you know your jaw drops and then you're really excited. 
So you were that stunned you didn't even think you were on the radar of getting the game? Uh, no, no, not at all. I mean, beside the way it's been, obviously making the Shield final last year, it was always going to be pretty tough to, to make it this year with all those players still there. But no, mate, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a thought at all that even crossed my mind playing a Shield game. I mean, maybe if I scored a big hundred or something in that Futures League game, it might have crossed my mind. But fielding for, for two sessions definitely didn't put it in my mind at all. What about that moment when you turned up for your first New South Wales training session and all these guys, a lot of whom you would have seen on TV, probably hadn't met a lot of them. How daunting was that? Uh, it was a little bit. I mean, I, I did meet a, a few of them, just being in and around sort of the traps with, with training for the 17s and 19s and little things like that. But uh, they were really good, mate. All of them were really good guys and they all made me feel really welcome. And that first training session was uh, was pretty good. I was a bit nervous getting into to bat, even though it was training. We were in the synthetic, so get the big quicks bowling off 18 yards in there. It was pretty dangerous, but uh, no, it was fun. It was good fun. And I was lucky enough to be present for the, the cap presentation. and you know, Everyone had their parents in there and it was done in the change rooms. Um, just talk us through that moment. Yeah, well, getting my cap from uh, from Muzz, from Murray Bennett, was obviously pretty pretty special, him playing for Austra not only Australia, but St George. St George there was obviously a pretty special moment. And it was a bit nerve-wracking, just sort of a bit chills going down my, down my spine when I got the cap and everything like that and all the words that were spoken. But, I mean, after that, it was, it was go time and I was really excited to get out there. So you're sitting waiting to bat and uh, hits are full and finally you're in, you're walking out to the middle. What, uh what was the heart rate like at that stage? Uh, the heart rate was actually, the heart rate was okay when I was out there, but the whole, when I put the pads on and waiting around was the, was the toughest thing. I mean, I've always found that once, when waiting around, that's when it becomes the worst. And if you wait for longer, then the, the worse it comes. But once I was out there, man, I mean, once I got through those first sort of five, ten balls, I felt okay. I sort of settled down a bit. But it was uh, still obviously pretty tough out there. Had a couple of early LB shouts, but then once I sort of scored that first run, it was big relief. I yeah, remember that there were a couple of fairly close LB shots, weren't there? And uh, it must have, your heart must have just absolutely dropped. Yeah, uh -huh. there was a couple. There was a couple of uh, of Hogan were early on. I think my first ten balls, I probably had two big LB shots. But uh, yeah, that's the way it goes, I suppose. I sort of had a bit of a luck that day and ended up scoring a few, which was good. How oh, great to, to have Simon Kadic out there to, to bat with him. And, uh, Talk us through what's it like out of the middle with Kadic. It's the first game. Did he say much? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, he, he did what he needed to do. He obviously, playing first class cricket, you can't be too worried about what other blokes and looking after the other blokes. So he goes about his business and just sort of seeing how he does go about his business is, is beneficial for me. Just seeing how he just, you know, concentrates every ball and the little things he says every now and then were, uh, were beneficial. But he didn't say too much to me, to be honest. He said a bit in the change room, but once we were out there, it was. It was showtime, you know, just wanted to wanted to bat himself and, and score some runs, which he did. Was there a moment there where you started to feel as so though you felt satisfied, you know, with if you reached ten or twenty or, we, or as it as it built up, were you going, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, just being in the change rooms there, I sort of just wanted to to go out there and score a, you know, a decent looking 20, 30, 40 and get a bit of respect in the change room. But the way it turned out, I mean I was obviously in pretty good form leading into that game with, with grade and, and once I sort of got to 40 and 50 I just sort of had a little thought that crossed my mind that I can, I can get 100 here, like I'm feeling pretty comfortable, it's a beautiful wicket, so eventually I did and it was a pretty, pretty good feeling, pretty good belief. And when you, when you scored that 100, when you got to the 100, uh, was this a massive flood of emotions coming through to think you've done that on debut? Uh -huh. Not really, not really, mate. To be honest, I mean, it didn't, it didn't really hit me the whole, the whole experience until a couple of weeks later when it was over. I mean, I got the hundred on the on the second second day of the of the game. So, I mean, there was still a fair bit of fair bit of work to do in the game to win the game. So, I sort of went home that night and just did the, all the usual things that I do, and it didn't really cross my mind until you know a week or two later, where you know I really realised that oh crap, I've got a first class hundred next to my name. It's pretty good got to experience what a lot of young players experience, that sort of rush of media. Suddenly yeah. there's this big interest in you, you're a new face, how is that to deal with? Uh, I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed it mate to be honest. I think uh, you got to enjoy it when it comes to that stuff, but I thought it was fine. I mean I wasn't really, I didn't think I was really hassled with it all, I just took it as it came and no, I really enjoyed it all and it was a good experience. You strike me as a pretty cool cucumber, does anything ever ruffle you? 
the game? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I was pretty ruffled those first 10 balls when I was out there, to be honest. But once you got that first run, it was all right. But no, nah, I mean, I do, things do ruffle me, mate, but I just try to, try to hide them when I'm out there batting, obviously. Sort of moved on from there, and then you, there was a bit of an opportunity there with the Thunder, which you decided not to take and focus more on the, the 19s. Talk us through that decision. Uh, there was just a, a few little issues. I mean, I obviously was, was excited. I mean, I, I would love to play for the Thunder, but I just uh, wanted to make sure that I was playing cricket throughout the summer. I was obviously in the form of my life, and I just didn't want to take that chance of, of not playing cricket at all with the Thunder. And so I wanted to make sure I played, you know, it's my, my last year ever of, of under-19 cricket, so I wanted to go away and, you know, enjoy it with all my mates that I've grown up with and, and play 19s. And, all that big bash stuff, I think he's going to here to stay around. So it's always things for the future. So uh, yeah, be looking forward to hopefully getting a getting a gig in that sometime in the future. Did you find it a bit different after you'd scored that first class hundred in terms of the way you were received at say under 19 level? You obviously had a name then. Did you find uh, there was a bit more respect for you, if you like, having done that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. To a certain extent, there was obviously. I mean, it was a bit different just knowing that people sort of know who you are when you come out to bat and all those little things like that. But I mean, the challenge for me was just to was just to go out there and, and play normal and play for the team and and do what I've been doing. And unfortunately, I didn't I didn't score too many before I got injured. I scored that one one innings, but you know that was that was the main challenge for me. I knew that the bowlers would sort of you know step up if you like, just to know that I was going out there and little things like that. But no, it was uh, it wasn't too much respect. It was just basically going about it the normal way you do. So you just had a bit of an interruption through injury. Um, you're back, you're fit, ready to go again now to finish the season off? Yeah, yeah. I've been out for probably five, five or six weeks now with a couple of tears in my in my in my quad. So in a way, I suppose it's it's good and bad. It's sort of given me a, a rest, a rest with all the under 19 Aussie stuff coming up. So, but at the same time, I mean, obviously would have been would have liked to be around and then hopefully getting another gig in the Shield game. But, I mean, it happens. It happens, so now i just got to go out there and hopefully score some more runs and maybe work, work my way back into that, that Shield side, if not now, the next year. Yeah, uh, the off-season, any plans uh, overseas or going to stay here? Uh, I'll be staying here, but there's a couple of... We've obviously got the, the, the Under-19 World Cup on this year, which is obviously a pretty big thing. So this off-season won't really be an off-season as such because it is a pretty full-on winter because you obviously have to going to have to keep fit for that for that World Cup and keep my skills going and there's also a tour coming up soon in uh, in early April it goes for two or three weeks in Townsville so I mean it, it'll be pretty hectic pretty hectic off season I might give myself a you know a few weeks off but then uh, it's going to be straight back into training and what does the Curtis Patterson away from the cricket field enjoy doing you, you like you play other sports you PlayStation man what, what do you uh, I, I used to play I used to play other sports as a junior then as soon as it sort of started to hit club level where you have to take it a bit more serious, I don't think I really wanted to. I wanted to concentrate on cricket. Uh, massive Xbox man. Love playing my Xbox. And uh, other than that, just being with mates and all those, all those normal Aussie things uh, is what gets me going. So next year, uh, obviously this ground's got great memories. I'm sure we would love to, to kick on all three forms of the game for, for, New, you know, for New South Wales or potentially one of the big match teams. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's obviously the, the goal is to, you know, you want to play all three forms of cricket professionally as such. I mean, that's obviously what you want to do as a professional cricketer. So, I mean, if I just get another chance in New South Wales, mate, I'll be, I'll be happy with that, you know, just to get back out there and wear that, wear that blue baggy and, and go from there. All right, Curtis, thanks for spending time with us today. Congratulations. No worries. Uh, on a great season so far and, and good luck with the rest of the year. Thanks mate, cheers.